It has been stated by both BP and EPA officials that if they ever decide to use bioremediation to clean up this spill, they will only use products that are already on the NCP list. But bureaucratic barriers and red tape have been tying up the bioremediation companies to a shocking extent, given the extreme importance of cleaning up the oil spill quickly in order to protect human health, save the marine life, and prevent further economic collapse. This is how generally government and the military respond to a crisis. They get focused, they close down, they have their way of doing things, they have a protocol and they follow it. Except that now there needs to be some sort of system put in place which is quick at reviewing these types of things that are available, sorting out the wheat from the chaff, and then applying them now, now. I think we lead, need to be a little bit more proactive than we were. Why, why put everyone into a tailspin in a crisis like this? It, it just seemed to me like it wasn't necessary. There are three main types of bioremediation techniques. As an example, we're going to focus on one technique we found particularly effective. That process differs from the other two in that it does not introduce more or new microorganisms into a toxic area. Instead, it uses naturally occurring enzymes, which are what microorganisms use to break down oil and chemicals. To explain how this works, we will use, as an example, a product made by a company called Oil Spill Eaters, Incorporated, owned by Mr. Stephen Pettigo. Mr. Pettigo invented a product called Oil Spill Eater 2, or OSE2 for short. Here, he describes how his product works in scientific terms and then in layman's terms. OSC2 is a liquid enzyme nutrient product. It has biosurfactants, enzymes, and a nutrient system to grow indigenous bacteria. We have no foreign bacteria in OSC2. When you apply OSC2 to an oil spill, the biosurfactants rapidly break down the molecular structure of the hydrocarbon, which detoxifies the hydrocarbon so that living organisms can live. While that is going on, we have enzymes that form protein binding sites, which is where the bacteria will go and eat the oil up. We also grow indigenous bacteria extremely fast, and when they run out of the nutrients in OSC2, they then convert over to the broken down, detoxified hydrocarbons and digest it to CO2 and water. So the end result is CO2 and water. So in a nutshell, OSC2 rapidly reduces the toxicity of the oil so that the living organisms in the water can utilize it as a food source. In the past 20 years, this bioremediation product has cleaned up over 14,000 oil spills and has been used in 30 countries. All branches of the U.S. military, including the Coast Guard, as well as the EPA and even British Petroleum, have successfully used it to clean up oil spills in the past. There has never been a single bad report of any damaging side effects from the use of this bioremediation technique as it is totally safe and non-toxic for humans and animals. Reducing the toxicity levels and bringing the waters back to their pre-oil blowout condition as fast as possible is a vital target. With this technique, you use planes or airboats to spray it on the oil and move on to the next area. It does the rest, reducing the toxicity within a few hours and then within two to four weeks the waters return to their pre-spill condition. For oil that is under the surface or resting on the seabed, this liquid solution would be injected down near the oil. Unlike using booms and absorbents, there are no hazardous materials to pick up, dispose of, or clean up. As a result of 14 successful demonstrations to government officials and civic leaders, at least 12 different official requests for permits have been made to the EPA to use OSE2 to clean up the oil. These requests were made by one state governor, three state senators, one parish president, the U.S. Coast Guard, the city of Destin, Florida, and the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. On at least two separate occasions, British Petroleum has requested that the EPA allow them to use OSE2 to clean up oil from the Deepwater Horizon blowout. But despite this, the EPA has still not issued a permit.
The Earth Organization is dedicated to getting the Gulf waters cleaned up now. We're working with scientists and other experts to educate the public on the fact that the disaster is not over. The crisis remains. But the fact is, to most of the rest of the world, it's hidden. But to the people whose lives are being destroyed and the life that's being destroyed, it is not hidden. It is vital that the seafood and the tourism industries recover quickly and the public's health must be protected. The only way those two things are going to happen is if the public demands that the waters of the Gulf be returned to their pre-spill condition. We take no pleasure whatsoever in having to alert the public to the fact that the Gulf waters and the seafood are not safe right now. But the good news is that there is a solution, and if implemented, it would bring the health of the Gulf back quickly. Things aren't going to get better until the Gulf waters are truly clean and safe. The seafood industry, the tourism industry, and the public of the Gulf need to visit call and write their U.S. congressional elected representatives. They need to demand that the bureaucratic barriers be removed that have been put in front of the bioremediation products that are already on the EPA list for oil spill cleanup, that have already proven themselves to be effective in the Deepwater Horizon Gulf blowout. We need the EPA permits issued immediately so that the contracted cleanup crews can begin using these very effective tools. It is a lesson learned after Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, and after fires, floods, and other disasters. When a catastrophe and a life-threatening emergency happens, it is we the people who have to step up and do something about it. Unfortunately, because of federal and state regulations, we can't just go out on our own and pour bioremediation products into the Gulf waters to clean them up. We must demand from our elected officials that they remove the bureaucratic barriers that are preventing the official cleanup crews from utilizing bioremediation. If you care about the fishing industry, the seafood industry, and tourism, if you care about the lives and the health of the men, women, and children who live along the coast, if you care about the marine life of the Gulf and you want to get more actively involved to help get the Gulf waters cleaned up, call this number, 303-333-3333.